Buenas noches, ¿cómo se encuentran? Yo aquí bien peda, ya voy con mi... I, I believe this is my ninth white, my white, my ninth white claw. I got ten minutes to talk about this. Okay. Let's talk about, I want to, the topic of today is Casa de las Flores. I just, I just watched the season finale along with the season special by Manolo Caro, which is, by the way, hands down, one of the most amazing directors of the, the La Cultura Mexicana. Holy fucking shit. Homeboy me making the moves. Cause bad, ain't nobody else talking about these topics like this. No, no, sir. No, sir. Y vamos a empezar. I do want to give a disclaimer. El lenguaje que sale de mi boca, that's what it is. I'm fucking drunk. I'm trying to go to bed. But I wanted to talk on these topics. Virginia. Oh, by the way, I just watched season three of Casa de las Flores. I was really excited about it. I saw it on... I saw that it was posted yesterday. Today, it, well, when I started watching it, it was the 25th. Now, it is now the 26th of April. So, I'm really fucking excited. I was really fucking excited about it. It is such a good show, man. Like, it's such a good show. Let's talk about season three. In, the, in episode one, Virginia and Roberta, que están enterradas juntas, Baby! What kind of shit is that? Ernesto de la Mora, baby! At this point, I was thinking like, Bruh, you ain't shit. I mean, only later to find out he married Virginia because, you know, BFFs for life, you know? Eso es de por vida. When you BFF, eso va para largo. Now, the other thing I have in unnoted, Maria just, Maria Jose's, Maria Jose's sister purificacion. Honestly, I feel like that plot line was very unnecessary. It was so unnecessary. Purificacion had nothing to add to the already dramatic De La Mora family. I honestly believe Esa purificación no tenía nada que ver con la serie. If they could have deleted her and the serie would have been top notch. Like, honestly, mwah. Like, I love Maria, uh, Manolo Caro, but purificación had, I, I really don't think she had anything to add to the series besides confusion. Because I, the whole time, season two, I was like, why the fuck is she here? Why is this bitch here? Bitch has no ad. It just sh goes to show how big of a heart Maria Jose's heart is. For, like, tiene palina, tiene a uh, purificación to worry about. And obviously her son, Bruno. Like, why do you have to have all these hardships on this one character, Maria Jose? She's a supporting actress as well. Like, no, 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 no. Purificación had nothing to do, I, nothing to add. To the series. I feel like the, the series could do without. Um, I have notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do want to read. I'm, I'm at. I'm a. Three minutes. And 52. 52 seconds in. I'm drunk. And it is. 2.42 a.m. in the morning. Uh. Pato ain't need to die like that. Pato didn't need to die. Dude. And honestly. Like. Christian Chavez. Baby, if I'm a, a Beehive member, baby, RBD, hueso colorado, like, de ser super fan, le, le, I double that shit. I, God, de, la ignorancia de la gente en los 70s, like, seeing him all bloody, like, oh my fucking God, my heart, like, I was sobbing, sobbing, bitch. So big! Pato, I need to die like that. Uh, next up, Le pondré el bebé. I need to have a plot hole like that. 
la pobre bebé and need to have a plot like or like that oh i think i'm talking about micaela micaela which is ernesto's daughter with roberta who initially kicked off the series with her hanging herself that Micaela, that baby girl, has so much trauma. And honestly, I'm here for how she plotted against that other little white girl that was supposed to be the lead of the group. And fuck that bitch. Honestly, like, that baby girl didn't need to suffer like that. If only, like, her, like, Ernesto was actually being a father to her. Yeah, and then, like, no, no quedó en conclusión ese, ese grupo que supuestamente hizo Bruno y, y Micaela. What happened to that? Nothing. That's what I'm saying. There's certain pieces of, like, as much as I love the show, Casa de las Flores, season one, two, and three, there were certain parts that could have been left out. Period. Period. Like, there are certain things that could have been left out, and it would have been like, mwah, chef's kiss story. And Micaela's um, plot of fame was one of them because they didn't touch up on that on the last season, last episode. Which honestly, to be honest, I can't read. I thought there were thirteen episodes, but it's apparently there was eleven. And I just, I just don't think it was satisfact to my satisfaction. All right, next up, who is who the fuck is the delivery driver, Elena? That who she ends up being really, you know smitten over i don't fucking remember him can y'all remind me like i'm genuinely asking i don't remember from season one or two this delivery driver he's not the frenchman he's not the cardinal he's not any of that who the fuck is he he just appeared out of nowhere and i was like you know what my grandma crazy uh diego's conversion camp what the fuck that is so sad, but it's a reality for a lot of people. That shit should be abolished in every single uh, part of the world. That conversion cap. Even though Diego low-key gets on my nerves, but only because how he handled, like... Uh, the reason that he got on my nerves is because he treated Elena like just like a pod for his uh, seed. Not like an actual human when she was in a coma. But... No. He, he, neither him nor anybody. Anybody should you go fucking be sent to conversion cap. It's really at his big age. Hell nah, bitch. What the fuck? I love how Elena scammed his parents to get his ass out though. She she a real one, Elena. Yeah, she be horny as fuck. I've been wondering, I've been wanting to look up WikiLeaks if she's an Aries. Because she has a lot of Aries energy. That's why I relate to her a lot. And Virginia, like like Elena, like Virginia, they were one-on-one with the... Estaban bien prendidas. Carmelita and Ernesto. That also goes to show that Ernesto holds it down with Virginia. Like, he was so in love with Carmelita. But at that point, like, he was Virginia's support system, which makes sense. With the whole infelidad is like wow, wow, Carmelita. I feel bad. I feel like her life could have gone a whole t- 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 different way, even if it wasn't in like the cl- the tax bracket that she was used to. She would have been way more happy than what she was. You know what I mean? She wouldn't have to fuck that fucking lion ass paraplegic motherfucker. She would have been actually like with somebody that loved her. Not so sad, but like Carmelita, like just to be reduced, like in the one and two seasons, the season one, season two of just being that she's most a neighbor, like she was more than that to their story. And it's just like, mm, mm, what is he doing? Last night I have the soundtrack. Before I started recording this, yo no nací para amar. I think I was on White Claw number six, bitch. Tears. Fucking tears. Holy shit. My mom's catalog growing up. Fuck, man. I felt hella triggered with the soundtrack. Casa de las Flores, season one through three. Mwah, Manolo Caro. You is that bitch. Manolo Caro is that bitch. He sure knows how to educate the culture on LGBTQ, LBGTQ, cultura. Period. 
Well, I mean, I think that's my my the end of my review for season three of Casa Las Flores, one through three, I guess. It's a really good show. I highly recommend it. I really believe you'll enjoy it if you watch my contact, whoever, like the 20, pl- 20 minus people that watch me on here. And uh, de veras se lo recomiendo. I, I really do believe that Casa Las Flores is that girl. Bien, bien open mind, como dice mi mamá.